Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're looking at some additional issues that I've seen brought up in various comments, replies, and requests, but which I haven't already done videos on. Last time, we talked about art in heaven, and this time, how do we know that we have the right formula for baptism? This issue was brought up to me by a commenter who suggested that the Christian historian Eusebius included a version of the Great Commission in his writings that matched one found in Luke 24, 45-47. Now, the Great Commission, remember, is the command that Jesus gave to his disciples in Matthew 28, 19. For reference, here are the two passages being referred to. Going, Going therefore, therefore, teach ye all nations, baptizing, baptizing them in the name of the, of the Father, Father, and of the, and the Son, Son, and of the and Holy, Holy Ghost. Ghost. Matthew 28:19. Then he opened their understanding, that they might understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus, Thus it is written, 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 written and thus and it behooved Christ, Christ to suffer, to suffer and, to and to rise again, again from the dead, 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 dead the third, third day. day. And that, and that penance, penance and remission and of, remission of sins, sins should be preached in his name unto all, all nations, nations beginning in Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Luke 24, 45-47. Now, right away, one problem with this claim stands out to me. Namely, Luke 24, 45-47 doesn't even propose a formula for baptism. It's about preaching the remission of sins. Still, is it possible that Eusebius passed on some translation in his writings in which the formula for baptism was different? Was the original formula different from the one in our current Bibles? Well, keep in mind, Eusebius of Caesarea was a Christian historian who was born at the earliest in 260 AD. Everyone who'd witnessed the ministry of Jesus had been dead and buried for over a century by the time he could walk upright. This is important because when judging the historical reliability of a source, it doesn't matter how old the source is, but the amount of time between the writing of the document and the historical events it refers to does matter. Eusebius' writings are definitely close enough to the events that they recount that they can be considered reliable but not if they come into conflict with earlier, more reliable sources. Not only are the Gospels themselves earlier and more reliable accounts of the life of Jesus than the writings of Eusebius, but they're confirmed by other early source documents about the life of Jesus and early Christianity on a number of claims, and the formula for baptism is one of those claims. Here's just one example. After the foregoing instructions, baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, in living, running water. If you have no living water, then baptize in other water. And if you are not able in cold, then in warm. If you have neither, pour water three times on the head, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Before baptism, let the one baptizing, and the one to be baptized fast, as also any others who are able. Command the one who is to be baptized to fast beforehand for one or two days. Didache 7.1 the Didache is a fine example of an early Christian source document outlining many Christian teachings and practices, and written way back in 70 AD, well within the lifetime of many of those who personally met Jesus. This same formula is also found in the writings of Tertullian, Irenaeus, and Ignatius of Antioch, all of whom are earlier sources than Eusebius. However, there doesn't seem to be any conflict in any case between baptizing people according to the tradition outlined in Matthew and the Didache and preaching to people in the name of Jesus. The fact that Eusebius chose not to quote this formula in his own writings doesn't prove much of anything and is certainly insignificant compared to the other evidence we have. This Trinitarian formula was used by the disciples and their successors in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Next. How effective is the prayer of an unbaptized person? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.